Top 10 Hardest Super Mario Galaxy Bosses. Let's go. Dino Piranha is the first boss you fight in this game. He is definitely a memorable boss, and this is why we rank him number 10 on this list. Well, you might be wondering why he is memorable. He is memorable for all of the wrong reasons. The first time you fight him, he's quite hard and challenging. He, he The fight start, starts when you break open the his egg, and then you spin attack his Ankles. tail to break him free of the egg, and then he starts running at you. Pretty intimidating for some newcomers to this game. Any other time you fight him, even if you play the game and have about 10 superstars, if you fight him again, he's extremely easy. All he does is run at you, but all you have to do is run to the left, then run backwards, spin attack his tail. Do that three or four times, and he's dead. He's tremendously easy, and this is why he's extremely memorable. Okay, now on to one of my personal favorite bosses, Megaleg. Megaleg is the first Bowser Jr. fight in the Super Mario Galaxy series, and it certainly can be difficult and, in my opinion, very memorable. I mean, look at this giant robot. Before this, Nintendo has never done a ro too much robot style, and one on this scale in a boss fight really is amazing. Plus, the music is quite well done. The main gimmick of this fight is guiding bullet bills with Mar using Mario to guide bullet bills into a cage. The cage will blow up revealing the grand star. This can be pretty difficult as the bullet bills are finicky and sometimes will hit Megaleg's head instead of the cage, forcing you to restart. But in order to get to Megaleg's head, you Mega have to climb up his whole, uh, one of his legs, kind of in the name. <laughs> Megaleg. <laughs> Megaleg, you climb up his leg. Wow, what a gimmick. You climb up his leg using in the gravity shifts, making it a little difficult. There's a couple of bullet bills trying to stop you in this rotating platform section, but overall it's not too hard, and you shouldn't have too much trouble of a time. And overall, you just enjoy this fight. Alright, moving on to number 9, Bowser Jr.'s Airship Armada. This fight, you fight Bowser Jr. actually for once, like himself. He's on his own airship, you're on your airship. You have to attack Bowser Jr. using Koopa shells and throw them at his ship to deal damage. He primarily attacks you with these random ball things and bullet bills. But in the second stage, he'll now use fireballs to f fight you, which can get pretty intense. Plus, there's Kamex on the sh on your airship, making it a lot harder to fight. Uh, when his ship turns vertically in his second stage and he starts shooting fireballs, this is where it really gets tough. Not because Kamex starts spawning like crazy, and there's fireballs and all that, because but the main par hard part is now his ship is vertical. Meaning you have a tiny window to hit a ship. Wondering what I mean by a window? Because the fireballs will actually destroy the Koopa shell, and they get shot right out of the right out of the front of the ship. Meaning Bowser Jr. will shoot fireballs. You have to wait for them to fly by you, then throw the Koopa shell and hit the very front of the ship. It's very difficult, but it's also pretty fun and it shakes up the game's whole atmosphere a bit, going from peaceful and happy sky space stuff. I don't know to intense airship fight, which is pretty fun. For this next boss is a pretty disgusting boss. We have Tarantox. Tarantox is a spider who shoots random green goo at you, and you fight him in his own spider web. It's pretty gross and kind of hard to fight because you're constantly being shot by him. And the hardest part about this fight is Tarantox will rotate on his web to shoot you with the green goo meaning you have to constantly run around. But you might be wondering, how do you attack? Well, you get you mer use Mario to get onto the web. Then, while using the Wii pointer, you grab where Mario is on the web, pull back, and release. This uses a slingshot effect, and the best place to attack is Tarantox's butt. Kind of weird, but doing this, if you successfully hit Tarantox, he will flip over, and then you have to, destroy the you have to hit those. I'm not even going to say it looks so gross. Do this process three times, or two times, sorry, and you've won. Definitely the grossest boss on this list. Ugh, I don't even want to talk about him anymore. Okay, with Terran talks out of the way, ugh, he's just so gross. Now, we're on to number six, Major Burrows. Alright, I got a confession. Major Burrows. Um, he used to terrify nine-year-old me. Not because he's scary in his first stage, in his second stage... Look at him. This guy is terrifying. 
And the worst part about it is in his second stage, Major Burroughs makes crazy noises and gets two times the speed, meaning you're getting chased by this flaming-eyed, screaming, super-fast, like, mole. It's pretty scary, and I used to get so scared that he'd hit me that I'd mess up every time trying to fight him at, at nine years old, meaning it took me forever to beat him. All you have to do is ground pound, and then spin attack hit Mr. Burrow's tail, and he's dead. Do this, I think, three times, and you've won. The only reason I had motivation to fight this guy was for the the little bunny you get to save, which is pretty cool. Which is a pretty cool detail for this fight. All right, we're entering the top five bosses, so these guys are about to get way harder. So buckle your seatbelts and enjoy. Number five, we have Squid Game. This guy has an insane amount of attacks. Fireballs, lava minions, the ground around the stage sinks into lava, and of course, meteors. Plus, this guy can take seven hits. So imagine, once again, nine-year-old me trying to avoid all these obstacles and then trying to fight King Caliente all at the same time. He is definitely on the harder side of boss fights and very memorable to the sheer amount of chaotic things going on. And something else I didn't even mention was that the meteors are actually everywhere. So, like, there's not, like, one or two random meteors. They're everywhere. And this just makes the fight a whole lot harder, but fortunately, I'm a Wii Tennis Pro, so nowadays I can get this fight first try. The final battle in this game is an incredible cinematic experience and makes for an incredible finale to, in my opinion, the best video game of all time. But we're here for the boss, Bowser. Bowser will take Mar fight Mario on three separate planets, each planet having its own form. First planet, Bowser will be in rock form. The second planet, he will go into his shell form. And the, and the final planet will be his original form. Here's how you fight each form. For rock, you spin attack Bowser's head. For spike, you use these rant, funny looking plant thingies to break Bowser's shell and then spin attack him once more. Finally, for the original form, you get Bowser to ground pound on one of these glass panels that break on impact. Bowser will then land on lava, giving himself a burn, which he'll start running around because that's just how all Mario games work. You'll spin attack him, and then he's dead. This is a long fight, but on the medium side of difficulty, and that's why Bowser's final stand doesn't quite make the top three. Alright, top three, baby. Bouldergeist at number three. We all love this boy. He's a homie. I don't know why we love him, but we do. But let's do this. Bouldergeist is the most iconic boss and ranks number three on this list. His main attack is to throw rocks at you, and he also gets his hands in his second stage. He'll use them to punch you and try to crush you. Plus, he also has this attack where he raises rock spikes from the ground, which is pretty easy to avoid, but definitely a cool detail. To attack him, you spin the Wii Remote using your spin attack to spin these black boos around that spawn from these black rocks. This is how you do damage. It can catch anyone off guard and throw a real twist at you. This fight really caught me off guard as I, for some, quite a while, didn't know what to do with these black boos. Even though earlier in the stage, the stage clearly says what to do with the black boos as you use them to break open a statue which reveals a launch star. So, I don't know why this took me so long. Let me know in the comments down below if this took you as long as me. Back to the Dino Piranhas. At number 2, we have Fiery Dino Piranha, which, if you could guess, is a remake of Dino Piranha, but with fire. Wow, never could have guessed. But what's cool about this boss is he is the last boss in this game, and regular Dino Piranha is the first. No one really realizes this, and it's a pretty cool detail and a good Easter egg for, on Nintendo's part. But anyway, the new Dino Piranha. He's trying to avenge his beloved friend or brother or I don't even know. Don't and he has definitely had gotten a new strategy. He's on fire! This makes the fight way harder as now you need to time your spin attacks on his tail or the t his tail will burn you as his tail catches on fire and goes not on fire every couple seconds. Plus, in his third stage, he'll shoot fireballs and start running really? way faster. I'm not sure if it's two times his speed, regular speed, but it certainly feels like it. That's why in this third, his third stage is single-handedly bringing him up to second place. It's just a chaotic fight and quite scary with him running around and shooting fireballs everywhere, but not nearly, nearly as chaotic as the number one pick.
Camella, on the ghost ship, is the ruler over all Kamex. But Camella has a strat. This strat is she will sit on the ghost ship and try to burn Mary with fireballs. Sounds pretty simple to avoid, right? You just avoid the fireballs, grab some Koopa shells, throw them at her. Once you hit Camilla a couple times, she'll fly up to the crow's nest of the ship and summon other magic Koopas or Kamex, whatever you want to call them, to help her. You'll climb up this pole here, get under the crow's nest, and be like, huh, let's just do this fight and get it over with. This doesn't seem too hard. Well, look at this. This area takes Mario, like, about five steps to cross, meaning Mario has five steps to avoid various fireballs. Camilla will sometimes throw out two or three fireballs at once, and her other Kamex, or Magic Koopas, whatever you want to call them, I don't even know, will be throwing other fireballs. They barely even spawn shells. So my strat is to kill the Kamex and then go for Camilla. But guess what? The Kamex respawn! It is just unbelievably crazy. And guess what? There's even a Daredevil run of this. I don't know how I even beat this. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it again. So don't expect me to do it. I will... It is crazy. I don't even know how I'd beat it here. Just kidding. I'm, I'm pro. But it is just overall... The third stage makes it way crazier than any other boss. And this is why I rank Camilla on the ghost ship the number one hardest Super Mario Galaxy boss.